when you talk about solutions, I am immediately imagining musical solutions to musical problems. Yeah. What about technical problems? Did, did Schnabel ever address that? Did you ever struggle with? Interesting, interesting. He rarely spoke about technical difficulties. If he accepted you as a student, he felt that you would be able to negotiate the piano. And uh, that he wouldn't have to talk about those kinds of, of uh, uh, problems. He, so we watched him like hawks when he did play. His, he was very economical. His fingers were always close to the keys. He used a suppleness of arm both, you know, sideways and in and out. And uh, he wasn't particularly interested in certain music. He was interested in the music that he thought was better than could be played. And that included most of the German repertoire, meaning Bach, Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven, Schubert, Schumann, Brahms. As a young man, he played Liszt Sonata, for example. He did play the virtuoso repertoire as a young man, but that no longer interested him him as he, as he got older. He was, he was interested in those challenges of, of uh, what you might call the more sublime or the more transcendental of music. Something like the Mozart A minor Rondo was a constant challenge that was worthy of his time and his experimentation. And I'm sure a lot of you were feeling, well, that's not typical. <clears throat> but to, you know, play it in, in, in the way that, that kind of takes the top of your head off, you know, it is difficult. Did you yourself ever struggled with technical difficulties and how you would go sure. about it? Sure, certainly. Oh, the, you know, you experimented. I had friends, I had colleagues who all studied with great teachers, technical teachers as well as musical teachers. Yeah, and I liked the idea of playing fast, loud octaves. You know? There is, there is a, a, a sportive ax, uh, a aspect to playing an instrument like the piano. And young people today do, I find, do things at the piano uh, that are truly astounding. You know, I remember when I was a kid, nobody had ever run a mile in four minutes. That was, that was, uh, beyond human capability. Then the young British doctor came along, Roger Bannister, and he ran, the, he broke the four minute mile. And in a way, that's, that's what young people, that's the way the playing of the instrument is progressing today. They're doing things that are in a certain way, perhaps belong more in Barnum and Bailey Ringling Brothers Circus, you know, astounding things. Not necessarily related to great music making. I found that the level of mediocrity is constantly rising. <laughs> Do 
teach a concept of tone, sound, extracting sound from the instrument? How, how did it develop? It has it changed throughout? Well, that that certainly developed from Schnabel because his sound was was uh, extraordinary, really. But he he spoke always in in. Uh, images he would give you pictures that would be like there's a, a, a certain sound sometimes in Brahms this kind of warm rich I remember he said it should sound like liquid gold that's a good picture you know yeah but sound is something you really have to develop and listen for by yourself. You really, and don't be afraid to, to, uh, to exaggerate when you work. You know, we, we sometimes, we're afraid of being in bad taste. So we, you know, kind of push the envelope. Let's try a little bit more. Would that work? Well, a little bit more of this, a little, take a little bit more time here, there. Uh, my recommendation would be do too much. Experience what too much is. Wow, that was too much. <laughs> then you can begin to back off from that. But this kind of putzing, this little, you know, kind of approaching bit by bit, uh, I think uh, kind of wastes time a little bit. The, the time that you spend at the piano in your own studio, in your own room where you practice, is an enormous luxury that you have now. You know, you're going to get to be in your 20s, and if you're lucky, I guess you could say, lucky enough to have a career, you're going to be busy learning repertoire and, and uh, polishing it off, so to speak, for, for performances. Once you start playing concerts, you don't have that much time to reflect and to meditate on the music. Now is the time. Now is the time also to learn those pieces that your teacher thinks are too difficult for you. Learn them. Learn the B-flat Brahms. Learn the Tchaikovsky, learn Rock 3. <clears throat> because physically you can do them now. You have that kind of flexibility. And you don't really know how difficult it is. <laughs> and if you, you learn it and then drop it for six months, a year. When you pick it up, it will have grown in your subconscious. It will have matured, and it will never be as difficult as it would be if you would pick it up at a later age. Really, I, I can't recommend that enough. Now is the time, until you're 19, 20. Don't think about concerts. I know concerts are fun. A lot of cookies from applause, you know? All right, give one, maybe two a year just to, you know, kind of stay in shape. You know how to walk on stage and bow and, and play. But learn, learn, learn like crazy. Learn as much as you can. Because as I say, it does grow in your subconscious. It ripens, it matures. And then you can always use that as a fund for, for
for a new repertoire. I'm sure I'm not asking the questions that the audience want to hear the answer to. Are there any questions that are brewing 